For many a century, mankind has striven to understand what space is made of. And if a measly hundred years ago this information was confined exclusively to theory, today, thanks to advanced telescopes, we are able to see many parts of the universe around us for the first time. As the picture of the closest areas of space gained in detail, the observer would again and again invariably encounter phenomena whose nature would prove to be harder to identify. Many of these are still able to leave the entire scientific community at a loss. For example, imagine one of the most exotic and bizarre objects in the universe, a celestial body previously unknown to science, a binary system spewing out jets of matter at a speed reaching a quarter of the speed of light. This is a microquasar dubbed SS-433. As a rule, microquasars are X-ray binaries, that is, stellar systems made up of two components. One of them is a regular star similar to our Sun. The other component is a compact object like a black hole or a neutron star. Matter in such microquasars is constantly in the process of accumulating in the compact object, which is accompanied by occasional outflows of matter at great speeds. These outflows are known as jets, and the nature of these jets reminds one of processes taking place in regular quasars. Now, it is not a regular occurrence in ordinary quasars. Meanwhile, as the mass of a microquasar is smaller than that of an ordinary quasar, jets may originate here practically on a daily basis. The principal difference between microquasars and ordinary quasars is in their mass and the frequency of matter outflows. For example, the mass of the compact components in microquasars is considerably smaller than the mass of those in regular quasars. It is just several solar masses. Just to compare, the average mass of a supermassive black hole in the center of a quasar may be approximately as much as a hundred million solar masses. As for the mass of the black hole likely to be found in the center of SS-433, it must be just a few dozen solar masses. The accretion disk of a microquasar is intensely luminescent, with emissions in the optical and X-ray bands. A regular quasar is an astronomical body boasting the highest luminosity among other objects in the observable universe. According to contemporary scientific views, these celestial bodies are active cores of galaxies where a supermassive black hole sucks in matter all around it, thus forming an accretion disk. As for the disk itself, it is a source of very powerful luminosity. Just to give you an idea, its luminosity may sometimes be hundreds of times as intense as that of all stars in a galaxy like ours combined. To date, over 200,000 quasars have been identified. We are able to observe some of these quasars in the sky even without using a telescope, and so the rate of discovering new objects of one or the other category is another principal parameter by which regular quasars and microquasars differ. If we look at the list of known microquasars, it contains just a few entries so far. The first microquasar was discovered back in 1978, when a source of unusual radio and X-ray emissions was detected by two astronomers from the University of Cambridge as they were looking for debris left over from supernovae. Detected in the constellation Aquila, this source was later dubbed SS-433. The object under scrutiny is an eclipsing X-ray binary system. One of its components is likely to be a black hole. As for the second component, it is a star of spectral type A, that is, a main sequence dwarf star of a whitish hue. It is assumed that this star's mass is 10 to 30 times that of our Sun, and more likely than not, the dwarf used to be considerably heavier in the earlier stages of its existence. Its surface temperature is thought to be anything from 7000 to 11,500 degrees Kelvin. This temperature range is typical for stars of this type. It is actually its temperature that gives the star its pale yellow tint. In fact, if we look at the stars closest to the Sun, then Sirius, Altair and Vega fall into the same class as this star. 
SS-433 is located within the supernova remnant W50, sometimes also called the Manatee Nebula. The age of this nebula is estimated at approximately 20,000 years, and the distance between the nebula and the Earth measures about 18,000 light years. The jets from SS-433 distort the clouds surrounding the W50 nebula. According to a certain theory, the W50 nebula and the microquasar SS-433 are actually related, and came to be as a result of one and the same supernova event, which supposedly took place around 20,000 years ago. It takes either of the two objects in the system 13.1 days to orbit the common mass center. In fact, the way the SS-433 system works is quite exciting, with both components constantly interacting with each other. Matter from the second component, that is the regular star, flows to the first component, or the primary, supposedly a black hole, thus forming an accretion disk around it. As it spirals, the matter heats up to extreme temperatures and emits X-rays. Some part of this matter leaves the system in two jets at the rate of approximately 26% of the speed of light. That is 79,000 km per second. In 2019, thanks to the ALMA Observatory, astronomers managed to get detailed images of SS-433. It was clear from the emission structure that the microquasar's jets themselves are rather narrow and their shape is irregular and has nodes. Further studies of the object showed that the shape of the jets is distorted as a result of precession, that is a process when the jets slowly rotate on their axis as they spiral. The diameter of either of the two jets ejected from the microquasar in two opposite directions measures approximately 5,000 times the diameter of the solar system. As SS-433 is relatively close to the Earth, it is particularly valuable to scientists studying the phenomenon of microquasars. Images beamed back by the ALMA observatory showed its jets for the first time and it also helped establish that the direction these jets point at is never the same. Just like a top, the spinning toy gradually slows down, they too rotate on their axis, which is perpendicular to the plane of the accretion disk. The ALMA images boasted another outstanding feature. The shape of SS-433 was predicted in fine detail thanks to spectroscopic measurements that had been done in 2018 using the Global Jet Watch telescopes and so the actual shape largely corresponds to the new images, where SS-433 is really seen to have a shape reminding one of a corkscrew. It isn't a rare occasion when jets like that originate here or there in the universe. As a rule, jets of plasma, also known as relativistic jets, are spewed out of the centers of active galaxies, quasars and radio galaxies. When this occurs, there are usually two jets as such, pointing in the opposite directions. And this is exactly what we can observe in the case of SS-433. Today, the phenomenon of jets like that wants deeper studying. It is believed that jets originate following the interaction between magnetic fields and the accretion disk around a black hole or a neutron star. As for their size, it may be staggeringly enormous. In the case of the radio galaxy 3C120, for example, the jet stretches for at least several kiloparsecs away from its source. It is highly probable that in the future the regular star in the SS-433 system will shed its outer layer completely as a result of the influence of the compact object. Its core, meanwhile, will remain hot, and thus the star will qualify to be called a hot subdwarf. Later, the star is to be gradually sucked in by the black hole and sooner or later, after this process is completed, the SS-433 system will assume a classical look. It will comprise just the compact object. The process of this system's evolution will of course continue for thousands of years, so we have plenty of time to study this phenomenon. And while the microquasar SS-433 is active, we will have many opportunities to carry out detailed observation that would help us understand the nature of this celestial object. Let's keep in touch.